Hi guys, this is Mikhail from Praga ICU, and today I will show you the setup and troubleshooting of an intra-aortic balloon pump counterpulsation. In this demonstration, we will use the CS300 console. In the pocket on the side of the console, you can find three cables. Cable for the external source of ECG and blood pressure. Internal pressure cable and internal ECG cable. ECG cable outlet comes to this port and ECG leads are attached to the patient. In rare cases we use the conventional pressure triggering here comes the pressure cable outlet. The other side is attached to the pressure transducer. If you want to use the external source of ECG and or invasive blood pressure, use the connection cable and connect it to the patient's monitor. External trigger source is then visualized on the screen. Here you can see the 7 French 40 ml volume balloon suitable for patients with height from 162 to 183 cm. This is the fiber optic cable which captures and transmits the high fidelity arterial pressure signal from the tip of the balloon pump at the speed of light. In contrast, in patients taller than 183 cm, we use the larger 8 French 50 ml balloon. Connect the helium balloon pump cable to the console. Finally, connect the lumen of the balloon pump to the flush or pressure transducer respectively. Most frequently, we use ECG as the trigger for inflation and deflation. The horizontal line here refers to the diastole during which the balloon gets inflated. Below is the arterial waveform which is most commonly transmitted from the end of the fiber optic cable. The horizontal line here starts at the decrotic notch which corresponds to closure of the aortic valve. In most cases we use the auto operation mode which is characterized by an automatic lead and trigger selection so you are unable to choose the trigger source. In semi-auto operation mode, operator selects most appropriate lead and trigger source. Again, ECG would be the most preferred source of triggering. Atrial pacer might be rarely used if there are A spikes larger than R waves, hence interfering with correct triggering. In internal source, trigger event is asynchronous at a fixed rate of 80 beats per minute. It is only used when there is no mechanical cardiac cycle, such as during cardiopulmonary bypass or asystole. Manual operation mode is for pediatric use only and we don't use it. During weaning of the therapy, we can decrease the frequency of balloon pump inflation to 1 to 2 or to 1 to 3 as well as decrease the augmentation. We should never decrease the augmentation to less than 50% as it increases the risk of thrombus formation. In auto mode, the user has the ability to fine-tune only deflation timing.
In semi-auto, the user has the ability to fine-tune inflation and deflation timing. When you are ready to commence the therapy, press the start button. Early after that, you can appreciate the balloon pressure waveform. On fiber optic arterial waveform, you can see the diastolic augmentation. Assisted and diastolic pressure is always lower than unassisted. If you change the frequency to 1 to 2, you can appreciate that only every second beat is assisted. On the right side of the screen, you can see that the unassisted systolic and diastolic pressures are lower than unassisted ones. Augmented pressure is as high as 114 mm of mercury. Check also the augmentation waveform pattern. This is how it normally looks like. If the catheter is kinked, rounded balloon pressure waveform with loss of plateau will appear. In semi-auto, you can also change the inflation and deflation settings. In case of early inflation, inflation of balloon pump occurs prior to aortic valve closure. Inflation of balloon appears prior to the crotic notch and diastolic augmentation encroaches onto the systole. In case of late inflation, inflation of balloon appears markedly after closure of the aortic valve, after decrotic notch. In case of early deflation, premature deflation of balloon occurs during the diastolic phase. Deflation of balloon is seen as a sharp drop following diastolic augmentation. And finally, in case of late deflation, deflation of balloon occurs after the aortic valve has opened. All above mentioned timing errors have deleterious physiologic effects. And this is all for now. Thank you for staying with us today and stay tuned for more educational videos from Prague ICU.